Hello, welcome back. And uh, from, from the last video, where I created the database. So in this video, I'm going to be um, um, adding the v, uh, the database that I created onto the web page. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'm kind of busy, so that's why I'm not concentrating. So now let me let's start business. Right, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the uh, database onto the default.aspx web page, and uh, to do that, uh, we have to go to the control, the toolbox. And if you don't know where this is, the toolbox is just right in that corner. You see, it can disappear and appear. So, go to the data area. And I'm going to use there are so many options, but for now I'm going to use the grid view. So let me double click on that. Uh, that should be added to our web application, right? So the grid view has been added, and um, what I want to show you now is how to populate this grid view with the database that we created. So if you select the grid view or any of the data control you're going to see a little arrow just right here at the right top top right of the grid view so if you click on it it's going to give you some options so uh, it's asking you to choose the data source so uh, we you can create a new data source because we don't have any data source already so and uh, they, they have a lot of options there can bind that to a XML file, a sitemap, object, link, access. But what we need here is the database. So you can specify an ID for the data source. So I usually leave it as the default. So you can name it anything you want. So just click on OK. Right. So which data connection should your application use to connect to the database? Right. We done. You see the student.mdf, the one that we previously have. So just choose that one. You can expand on this to see a uh, connection string. You don't have to worry too much about what this means now. In the future, when I create advanced uh, videos, I'm going to teach you what that means. So click on next, and uh, um, you can save your connection string. It's always ideal to save your connection string. Uh, connection string is, you know, is is going to tell your application what connection that you want to have. So if you have three database, you can have three connection strings. So every time you want to connect to a control, you can select which connection string you want to use so that your application understand where to pull the data from. So let's save this one. You can call this one student connect. Let me just do the student connection string. So and save it. Next. Now this is where it gets more fun right here you can um, specify which column of your table you want to pull data you can select to just choose the student name the first name and last name so if that's the only thing you want to do uh, you know select and sh display on your web application you choose that otherwise if you want to select all just click on the star it select all from the so if you have many table everything which shows up here you, because we only have one student so uh, here is where you can do a lot of advanced stuff like writing more advanced query you can order by you can do advanced stuff I'm going to show you how to use this in the next video so don't worry about this now just um, you can also return unique roads and stuff so just let's go ahead and just continue uh, sorry so, so click on next you can test your query to see if it works. If it returns data, that means your query is fine. You see, all the data has been pulled out. So, finish. Right. You will notice a change in the control. You can see that the uh, columns has been changed to student ID, student first name, and student last name. And um, you can make it more beautiful by. Uh, let me show you how I go here. Just click on auto format and you can you know choose a lot of different colorful, you know, depends on your taste. Oh, I like that professional. Oh, okay. 
Uh, Oceanic, you can choose whichever one suits your taste. In generally, I usually go for this colorful one. <laughs> I don't know if I'm kind of colorful, but let's choose the professional one to show that we're more professional. Alright, so let's apply that. Okay, it's been applied. Okay. Uh, here you can, this are more advanced stuff. Let me just leave it for now. But you can enable sorting. That means you can sort by last name, by first name, by student ID. You can enable paging. This means if you have so many data, say 200, you can actually enable. Uh, page one page two page three just like you do on eBay <laughs> and you can enable selection this won't make any sense now but so I won't just select it just leave it like that so now we can get out of here so our database is now ready to be viewed and it's just a simple we haven't written any line of code have we now okay so now let's run it and um, uh, okay because we haven't run it at all it's asking us if we want to enable debugging so yes let's enable debugging right we can see voila you see that is database application without writing any single line of code so you can start by last name first name student ID you know so simple is it isn't it um okay Great. right so let's stop the application from running okay um what else do I need to show you let me see any other thing I can show you from here configure data source edit columns add new columns right um right nothing I want to show you from here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video now you can play around with your own Visual Studio and see if you can you know do this it's very simple then the next video I'm going to show you how to actually add data to the database from the web application instead of going to the back end and modifying it with your hands you don't need to do that you can just create a uh, text boxes that will help you to populate the database from the front end so Thank you very much for listening.